Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I continue work on the Shinkansen space plane system. For those who are not familiar with it, the Shinkansen system is one where two mostly identical space planes lift off and then the carrier one, which does not have a crew cabin in it, but instead is filled with fuel in front, uh, then goes off. It acts as part of the first stage. Uh, once it's out of fuel, it just leaves and then of course is hopefully recoverable it still has fuel for its rcs ports and can fly uh, the question is where we land it but we'll set that aside for now the other side is the one with crew and potentially a little bit of cargo and it makes orbit and it has its fuel tank in the back the back end and the center portion are identical it's just the front end where it's different so this has the cargo bay and crew cabin this has just a big fuel tank in front and well i previously had an old version of the shinkansen that was uh a little bit different than this. It had different engines. It had gas generator engines. These are a little bit more efficient and it required boosters to really do things. So we had to slap on extra boosters on either side, a total of five, uh, no sorry, three boosters in order to make it work out. Uh, but I wanted to redesign it so that it didn't need boosters and it's been a little bit hard. It, uh, I When I tried it out, it didn't quite make orbit <laughs> so it once again was short of delta v uh, so i've made some adjustments uh one of the reasons why my initial estimate for things you know getting rid of the boosters and making it a little bit better uh, didn't work out is because i insisted on also having an abort system here which adds mass so the abort system is complicated and adds a little bit of inefficiency to the whole business and also, I think I was a little bit more generous than I intended to be as far as the wing was concerned. I could have made that shorter. But we'll see. The thing is, the system is designed to go to the moon and come back. And basically, it's meant to be an Earth to the moon to Earth vehicle. So it goes back and forth between Earth and the moon. It doesn't even land. It just picks up more people from low Earth orbit and goes back. And the purpose of it is to use Earth's atmosphere to slow down when it gets back to Earth. And now, of course, on the moon side, you have to use your engines to slow down, capture into orbit, and then break orbit. But when you come back to Earth, uh, instead of trying to use the engines to slow down, we use the big wing. And so this is optimized to have a big surface area and be very light. It'll be empty. It won't have any fuel in the back when it tries to recapture around Earth. That's still something we have to test, but that's the principle of it. And that means that this is reusable going back and forth between Earth and the Moon and would only come back down to the surface if there is the inability to do maintenance and repairs on it in space. So it'll be reused as much as possible and then if it can't be reused anymore It'll come back down for maintenance and stuff like that. So, that is the idea. Now, get, we have to get to orbit first. <laughs> that, that's that's the long-term goal. Of course, with the old Shinkansen, I had already done it. Uh, but the first thing is, let's get to orbit with this version. And I've made some adjustments. First of all, the back tank here, which used to only fill this area, now extends into the wing, partly. It's therefore an awkwardly shaped tank so it's using this volume here it's a little bit of an awkwardly shaped tank but i decided that that was for the best pekka suggested changing the uh, propellant mixture on the engines i had been fuel rich before we are now oxidizer rich what that means is that we are now using more oxygen compared to the methane these are methane oxygen engines and when we use more oxygen instead of methane then that means that we are getting more mass for the same volume and since we're volume constrained here you know we have to fit this volume that we have uh, having the denser propellant the oxidizer oxygen instead of the methane helps that means we have we're using more mass and then we will get more delta v like that uh, so well there's, there's a the, I, I say that but it's, there's a catch because you're carrying more mass, it reduces your thrust to weight ratio. You do end up having more stuff to burn in a way, but if you reduce your thrust to weight ratio, 
then that hurts as far as the drag losses and gravity losses as you go up. And this is a thing that gets a lot of drag as it lifts off. So having a lower thrust weight ratio is not great. So we, we are heavier and we have a lower thrust weight ratio. So, and so it's been a little bit of a trade-off. I, I did not get the extra delta V that I thought I would get from packing the extra fuel. Basically we have like a hundred tons more fuel when you combine the effect of having the oxidizer rich engines instead of the previous mixture and also using the wing root as part of our fuel tank. So yeah. Well anyway, let's obviously I've made these changes and it does work now. <laughs> so uh, we will see it get to orbit and then I'm going to move on from there. We will do a re-entry test. We had done a re-entry test sort of accidentally last time because we were left suborbital and it did survive re-entry, which is good, but we, we haven't actually made it to the runway. We'll see how that works. So we're here at Tampico where this will be launching. It's a little bit small for this particular, well, I, I guess it's okay. It's about right. All right. So, uh, just to review, we have a total of eight methane oxygen engines down below. They each produce about 1,500 kilonewtons. The center two engines on the space plane side are vacuum engines, but they can light on the ground. I checked, they don't have flow separation. And that's because of the relatively high uh, chamber pressure that we have on these engines, them being staged combustion engines, they get 3,200 PSI. So, we have just the sea level engines on the opposite side, the carrier plane side. The vacuum engines do way more than the sea level ones, as should be appropriate. So, uh, Chinio. It's called Shinkansen because that's the name of the bullet train in Japan. So, these are sort of. Uh, it's meant to be a bullet train to the moon. Yep, it's a little bit wobbly at the start and tends towards this side at the beginning. So up we go. This is my uh, Tempico scenery. I should improve upon it as well. We accidentally have Jeb, Bill, Bob, and presumably Val. Yes, Val. So it goes like this. And the launch script has particular things to handle. It's going to shut off the outer engines on the carrier plane side, and then eventually it's going to throttle down the center engines as the whole balance of the thing changes. Because the carrier plane is draining, but the space plane is not. The space plane is currently being fed by the carrier plane through that fuel line. So here it's throttling down the two engines on this side. To help maintain the balance. You can see the pitch going down. It'd be much further down if it didn't throw down these engines. Off that goes. It can also dump that uh, decoupling system. But we'll get to that sort of thing later on. So this continues. Currently has all four of its engines on, but the script will also turn off the sea level engines once the G-force gets high enough. Okay, it has switched off the sea levels, so now we're only on the vacuum engines. It would technically be more efficient to only have the vacuum engines and not have the sea levels at all on this side. The reason I didn't do that was because I wanted the same mounts for the engines on both the carrier plane and the space plane. So we basically put the engines in the same place and it would have the same hookups and everything and we have four on each. On the old system we had five engines on the carrier plane and only two on the space plane and the two on the space plane had extendable nozzles. I don't know why I made an additional sound there but okay. I took pains because I was having trouble getting to orbit. I even made sure to actually lock the control surfaces just in case they made extra drag so they don't actually have any control deflection right now. Well, at least the big ones, the canards and the ones on the wings. The other ones I didn't bother to do that with. 
So at this point, since we're getting into space, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to let them move so that they can work when we go to re-entry. I had tried to see if I could lighten the thing up. I actually came up with the mass using all the frames and stringers and the skin mass and the tile masses. I summed it all up and it turned out that my initial estimate was about right anyway, so I couldn't get any additional efficiency like that. Okay, and we are in orbit. We have about 280 meters per second, it says, but that's in four seconds, so we must be cautious. Uh, yeah. Yep, 51 tons right now, and we need to come back down, but I would like to have a more regular sort of orbit if I can get it. I don't think I can very cautiously light the engines, though. The RCS on here uses the methane and oxygen with a specific impulse of 340 seconds. Currently we should be carrying um, enough food, water, and oxygen for two weeks for the four crew and also enough fuel cell hydrogen and oxygen for two weeks. It doesn't have OMS engines, it only has the big engines and an RCS. Partly that's because we already have we are already carrying a whole bunch of abort system engines. And I just didn't want any more engines. Okay, that's one and a half hour orbit, though it's a little bit lopsided. We're going to wait a day and then we're going to try to come back down. And we're gonna try and come back down to Tampico. That's because in this install I don't have the Cape Canaveral scenery, so got my Tampico scenery and I'm gonna work more on that to make it swiftier, but we don't actually have the Cape Canaveral scenery. Let's see if the re-entry script can handle it. In particular, whether it can handle the whole big vacuum engine deal. It had some problems turning particularly well with the RCS. I know that. Yeah, it, it only puffs it a little and then yeah, doesn't do enough puffing. So the engine has to turn. Well, that's not a good thing to do. I think we actually ran out of the engine propellant. Even though it says 130 meters per second there, it doesn't really mean it. Well, let me just... Whoop. Oh, these work now. That's good. But anyway, we've got other problems. Can we use RCS to deorbit? Well, I might just barely be able to get it back into the atmosphere, but it's not going to be good for a re entry. Should have just had it do RCS in the first place. Well, we're not going to have a whole lot of RCS to just turn even right now. I'll see what happens when we have the, such a high periapsis. Probably not a good thing. Well, should we have KOS try to do it? I don't know. I think this time I'll just use Smart ASS. Well, on the bright side, the periapsis is going down, but maybe not fast enough. Yep, we're using a lot of propellant trying to keep the nose up. We are coming down though. But are we going to be low enough to use the control surfaces by the time the RCS runs out? Seems doubtful. That methane is ticking down pretty quickly. Well, our abort parachutes are overheating. This seems to be a thing that happens. <laughs> um, uh, technically, we don't need them anymore. I mean, well, we'd probably like to have them, but yeah, well, they overheat. And obviously, they shouldn't overheat. They're, they're on that side, <laughs> but uh, they're overheating nonetheless. Probably the heat conductivity of this part needs to be adjusted. We're here for some reason. Definitely not where we wanted to be, but... 
circumstances led to a different re-entry. The body itself is overheating there too now. Okay, we have lost RCS propellant. Yaw is the big problem here. Uh, you can see he's leaning there. The big canards can handle the pitch somewhat, but the yaw is just on these little guys. It's valiantly trying to hold on. Oh, I don't know what just exploded. I guess it was in the cargo bay something. It wasn't the crew section after all. Really wish the stuff in the cargo bay and the top on the top of the crew section wouldn't explode. I mean, it shouldn't be rolling at all, but you know that's fine, I guess. It's sort of back into position, kind of. It just can't get to a zero roll. The yaw is still maxed out, though. And it's sure using a lot of everything else. Uh, well, we're spinning around a lot. Okay, it might have just gotten a hold of itself there. Let's try and pitch down carefully here. This is about where I would think that it could aerodynamically control itself without the RCS, so... That's fine. But it's sure doing a lot of spinning before this. Okay, well, we're around here in Africa. Trying to... Get down before we no longer have any sunlight. It should be possible. It's generally very nicely aerodynamic. But, you know, high in the atmosphere you do need RCS. A bit of wiggling here, though if we pitched up a little bit more there'd be less wiggling. I can switch to atmospheric autopilot. I believe I have that in this one. Hopefully. <laughs> yes. So, atmospheric autopilot is on. No more wiggling. Well, nope. coming in. Okay, where's our stall speed? <laughs> it's wiggling the roll and yaw really fast now. Don't know if we have some landing gear lights. Uh, I can't pull up. Uh. Okay, well, we need to land faster than that. Oh! Uh, oh! Ah! Oh! Well, we've sort of seen this before. I don't know how it. Oh! No, just when I thought they were safe. No luck. Okay, so that's not good, but I think I'll try again. This time I'll have it deal with RCS, but yeah, we need a faster landing speed than that. Which probably means we should have drag chutes, but we'll get to that later. Let's take care of the basics first. We'll launch once more. Okay, here it goes again. Okay, we have first engine shutdowns. Off goes the carrier plane. The margins are still pretty darn tight around here. Okay, and we are in orbit. And it's lying about the Delta V again. 
But I need to make sure to boost to a better apoapsis and periapsis, so I will do that with just the RCS. And I will only allow the reentry script to use the RCS, so no more engines. Okay, we have a one and a half hour orbit. A little bit more circular than last time, but that doesn't really matter, I don't think. And we will wait the day again. Probably since we're using RCS to deorbit, I should tell it to deorbit earlier than otherwise. But how much earlier? Well, I'm not sure about that. We'll just see what we've got here. Now, well, I told it to puff the RCS a little bit more vigorously in order to turn this time. It didn't stop it very well. Oh, now I do have to reactivate the control surfaces. Let's not forget that. Maybe I should just do 24 on these as well. Well, this sure takes a while doing it this way. But without the OMS engines, we don't have much of a choice. And I could put additional retrograde RCS, I mean, RCS thrusters in this direction. Quite sure they'd be great, but maybe up top here somewhere. Right now we're using some pitch that's pitch up, so it's pushing. Well, actually, those are firing and those are firing, so it's complicated. These that face down probably shouldn't be firing, I think. Anyway, maybe a few more thrusters would be good. Well, to be honest, I'm not sure this is leaving us with any extra methane and oxygen for controlling ourselves during descent. We'll see, but it's not looking like a whole lot more right now. Okay, it shows a periapsis of about 10 kilometers and now we are preparing to enter. And we'll see how that goes. It's turning around. We've got 324 liters of methane left. And 44 meters per second of delta V, RCS delta V only. It says. Just, uh, it's not turning to prograde very well right now at all. So that's a bit of a problem. Uh, I think the steering manager stuff needs to be tuned a little bit better. Well, we are in the atmosphere. Not quite tilted right. I think we're overflying Tampico by quite a lot. So I don't know what was up with that retro burn. It doesn't seem to be getting us to... Uh, it must have been that it was too long with the RCS, but was it really that long? Did it take that long to do the RCS burn? I guess I'll have to start it way earlier. Maybe we'll end up at Bermuda. The Bermuda runway is there. We're out of line with it right now. We're headed to Cuba. <laughs> if we're lucky. But right. I mean, right now... It's gonna be tough. It's gonna, it has very little fuel to hold itself. We're probably got, we are probably going to be flopping around all over the place again. Well, we're largely passing everything. Uh, Cuba's already mostly gone here. And once again, the parachutes are overheating. Of course, I haven't fixed anything related to that, so that's not a surprise. I have to, uh, I think it must be that we're aimed for coordinates for the wrong coordinates, but I don't see how. I wrote the right longitude and latitude. <laughs> I've got those. So I don't know why 
it it seems to think that we're we're actually well, but the target distance is going up, so it's just confused. Yeah, it's just confused. This sure has different dynamics than I, I don't know. There's something weird going on, but probably it was the long RCS burn. But that that's a lot more different than I thought it would be. And we're about to run out of RCS again. Well, it's actually managing to hold it without the RCS at this point. But this is obviously not ideal. Maybe I can sort of refine the launch script to be a little bit more efficient and get us to orbit with some more fuel. Uh, this is all very tight. Fortunately, normally this would not be coming down directly. This is not meant to go to orbit and come back down. It's meant to go to orbit, be refueled, and then go to the moon. So in that case, it would end up coming back with much more left over than this. Well, I mean, it's nice that it survived and all and it didn't go all crazy on me. But we're ending up in the middle of the Atlantic, so this is not going to be great. <laughs> it's not going to be great, but we'll, we'll see what happens up to the part where it hands me control, I suppose. I'll go ahead and use Fizz Warp since we're not worried about accuracy or efficiency anymore. Okay, well, it's pitching down. Well, it's a little bit wiggly, but I'll allow it. Problem is, it's still going too fast. Probably shouldn't have pitched down quite so soon. Okay, yeah, it's really wiggling here. It's going to give me control at 15 kilometers, which is probably not a good time. Okay, but, but I've got atmospheric all pods, so it's okay. I immediately activated it, and it's fine. Okay, let me try and pull up carefully. Oh, it's gotten all dark for some reason. I guess we're, well, we're under, we are right under a cloud. Okay, now it's clearing up. Okay, well, how fast do I have to go exactly? Okay, pulling up more. Don't go up, though. Oh! Oh! Well, sort of realistic. When you think about it. At least they survived this time. Anyway, more work needs to be done, clearly. But at least we can get to orbit and sort of come back. But yeah, the margins are a little bit too thin. Again, then I'll try and squeeze what I can. But yeah, yeah, but those are the landings need work. And the re-entry script needs to actually get us to where it's supposed to go. But I will work on that for now. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.